The White House and McConnell tried to paper over this animosity, releasing joint, rather separate statements today talking about shared goals. Throughout his feud with the president, McConnell has spoken almost on a daily basis, either with Vice President Mike Pence or new chief of staff John Kelly. Throughout all of this, Elaine, the president's historically low approval ratings remain stuck in the mid-30s. Well, Major, the president won the election by not playing by the rules. How are his suggestions to do away with conventions like the filibuster being received by Washington? Well, the real question, Elaine, has nothing to do with how it's being received in Washington in general. There's only one constituency that really matters, that's Senate Republicans. And there is no call among Senate Republicans to fundamentally change the rules of the Senate to move legislation to a simple 51 vote majority, despite the president's repeated advocacy for that on Twitter. And the reason for that is quite simple. The Senate is a place that is designed to create bipartisan compromise and through that protect minority rights, meaning if you're in the minority party, you can get some of what you'd like to achieve legislatively because there's this 60 vote requirement on most legislation, which means unless you have a party with 60 votes in the Senate, you have to work with the other side. Republicans don't have that. They have 52 votes. And sometimes, as in the case with the Affordable Care Act, they can't even keep their 52 votes together. The president is ever more frustrated by that long-standing Senate tradition and institutional difference from the House. He wants that to change, but Senate Republicans do not and will not make that change for an institutional and also very practical reason, one the president might want to consider. If after the midterm elections in 2018, Democrats take control of the body and therefore there is a simple majority process there, then they can do whatever they want to the president's agenda and never have to work with Republicans. That would be even more frustrating for this president. So at times, the president may want to consider the institutional rules of the Senate frustrating, but nevertheless possibly valuable in the long run. Major, I want to ask you about Tuesday. As you well know, the president has attacked the media since the beginning. You have covered Donald Trump and attended countless rallies from the beginning. How did the attacks on the media Tuesday compare? Well, they're part of a deflection strategy. When the president, as president or as candidate Donald Trump, got into a fix, he would often say, I'm not in the fix because of what I did or what I said, but how it was misreported, how it was misinterpreted by the media, how the media enemies of ours, and he would always speak collectively about this, are out to, to attack us, assail us, minimize us, etc. That was absolutely what the president was trying to do last night. Say all the things he thought were defensible about his comments immediately after the Charlottesville events and not talk about the things that got himself into such conspicuous trouble. That self-editing is part of the president's own way of justifying his rhetoric to himself and to his followers and then putting in between that. See, I said all the right things, the president said last night. But the media just wouldn't report them. Well, as everyone in America knows, Elaine, there was live coverage of every single thing from beginning to end that the president said about Charlottesville and every one of its variations. The country got an unfiltered view of the president on that topic three different times and a fourth time last night. And the country has made up its mind, if you look at the polls, it's not satisfied with the president's response. And even those close to the president, such as his ambassador in Israel, said the president's reaction to Charlottesville was not fine which he asserted it was last night in Phoenix. So that also gives you some indication of the reaction among those as close as you can possibly get to the president. They weren't satisfied. Others within his cabinet and within his White House were not satisfied. So this is a conversation largely going on between the president and his converted and ever loyal political followers. Well, Major, one of the president's biggest campaign slogans was to drain the swamp. By calling out establishment Republicans like Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Senator John McCain, is that uh, essentially fulfilling that campaign promise? Well, it's certainly not fulfilling it, but it is orienting himself at least in that direction. And there have been lots of people who have been advisors to the White House who 
have deep corporate or industri industry alliances or affiliations. And so the idea that those who have vested interest in the outcome of either regulations or legislation having the year of this president, the year of this White House, that's been pretty thoroughly documented. And some ethics experts say this White House has a historically low threshold, a low standard of this intermingling of those with either a vested interest or an indirect interest in the outcomes of governmental decisions and their advocacy for them, either with the White House or the president directly. So that's one aspect of draining the swamp that is extremely problematic when you look at the underlying details for this president. But if he does take on Republicans, who he can suggest are establishmentarians like Jeff Flake up in the 2018 election, or John McCain, or Mitch McConnell, he at least gives some sort of rhetorical defense that he's not leaving the swamp as he found it, that he's even willing to take on his own party. That may serve a short-term political objective, but there is some significant and very difficult legislative work ahead for this president and Republicans in Congress. And division in those ranks is the last thing this president needs. And yet Politico is reporting, Major, that the president met with several potential primary opponents to Senator Jeff Flake in Phoenix. How would it play out if President Trump did not support an incumbent? Well, he isn't. Clearly he's mm -hmm. not. I mean, he's unstinting in his criticism of Jeff Flake. He didn't say it by name, but everyone in Phoenix knew he, who, who he was talking about. And the super PAC that is aligned with this White House has already made it clear it is supporting and plowing money into the Republican challenger to Jeff Flake, Kelly Ward. So much so has that aggravated Senate Republicans that a super PAC that is very close to the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, has begun to run digital ads against Kelly Ward. So there's already a battle among Republicans over this potential seat way before the season typically gets engaged. Mm -hmm. And it's just an indication that in money and in advocacy, Republicans are warring with each other over things that you would assume would be largely settled. Defend Republicans in the Senate, defend the majority you currently hold, try to enlarge it as much as you can. That's not what's going on. Finally, Major, at a speech in Reno Wednesday, the president seemed to have a more tempered tone. His new chief of staff, General John Kelly, was expected to be a voice of reason, a disciplining influence within the White House. Is General Kelly accomplishing his goals? If you talk, as I do with some frequency, to those who interact with this White House, either in the lobbying community or in the House or Senate and the leadership ranks, they do believe and they do feel that there is a difference in the policy making deliberations and discussions and ultimately decisions being imposed by the new chief of staff john kelly and they welcome that discipline that sense of order that sense of at least a coherent process that they can follow and understand those things are beginning to take shape and are creating some sense of reassurance among very skittish and very nervous republicans that's all on the plus side. But the last week and a half has indicated very visibly that when it comes to his own brand of talking to the American public, talking to his supporters, going off script, President Trump is absolutely without restraint. And no chief of staff, not even a retired four-star Marine general, who the president does personally respect, can change that fundamental aspect of the president's personality. John Kelly stood to the side of the Trump Tower press conference last week, the impromptu one, which deepened the president's problems on the question of Charlottesville with his head slumped down, knowing he had no control over that moment. There was nothing he could do. He was powerless. And those close to the president say that was part of the point of that impromptu press conference, to let General Kelly know, you may be chief of staff, you may be imposing order and discipline, but you can't control me. The episode last night in Phoenix where the president had no script, had no teleprompter, if he did, he largely ignored it. Also a reminder to all close to him, he's in charge of the words that come out of his mouth. And when he's revved up, get out of the way. And interesting to note as well that at one point the president actually called for General Kelly to come up on stage. We did not see Mr. Kelly appear on stage. Major Garrett at the White House for us. Major, thanks so much. Sure.